So Doomers, welcome back. By fairly popular demand, we're looking at a pretty cool pedal here today. At least the pedal with the coolest artwork I've seen. At least the coolest artwork I own. Uh, but you know, if you wanna go head to head with that, tell me what you think has cooler Doom artwork than the bitch of Doom herself, the priestess. Um, I don't really like to call gear he's and she's but there's a there's a picture of a priestess on there getting all blues dad with his 59 les paul up in here so let's get straight to it let's have a look at these controls on the priestess now it's quite different to the pharaoh it can be sort of assumed that it's a bit of an upgrade to the pharaoh it's not really i think it comes with a very similar uh, topology as they say in the business I don't really know what the fuck that means it's all about a, a muff with mid-range but the difference with the priestess is the first big thing is that we've got a nice big mids knob so we can vary how much mids are going to come in and balance that with our sound on the intro video you heard that getting varied for uh, the left and right if you're lifting the headphones you'd hear the left and right mids off big wall of sound center loads of mid-range, some extra tone up in there to really crack through with a, a bit more of a lead tone. Um, then we have these two switches here that really set the Priestess apart. I don't know if you can see too well, but we've got off clip one, off clip two. Now, according to the descriptions on the website, is there a type of clip in there? Let's see what the website has to say about clipping modes. Now, I know what a Priestess is. Black Arts Toneworks. By the way, you notice this sticker here. I'm no way affiliated with Joe or his pedals, although my name is Joe, just in case you didn't know that. It's not Dr. Fuzz. I'm not a real doctor, though I am entirely made of fuzz. This is Joe's Pedals uh, shop in the UK. So if you're in the UK and you're after any kind of esoteric pedals really, he stocks a load of interesting stuff, including Black Arts Toneworks, and that's where the priestess came from. Ah, okay, so the website describes these clipping toggles as gain stages. So you have four gain stages. Two of those stages, you change the clipping. So you either have the clipping stage in or you have the clipping stage out, but it's always gonna be a clipping stage. The four stages being like, I guess they say Big Muffs have four transistors. The Priestess is a Big Muff at heart, just like the Pharaoh was, but taken a little further. So the second stage bypasses the diodes for a super tone bender style clipping circuit. Remember that, because you'll hear that. And then when you put it in, you get something, it doesn't say what it, supposed to be like but clip one for standard silicon clipping so you bring the silicon clipping stage in it does change the sound fairly significantly you'll hear that and clip two controls the third gain stage you either bypass the diodes for an open dynamic sound like the pharaoh bypass so the very similar to the pharaoh having a three-way toggle um you take the diodes out on the pharaoh it suddenly gets really loud that's what this does you've got a crazy hybrid of stuff in this pedal for muff aficionados <laughs> That is that cheesy? And it's worth it. That's why it gets its own video here. It's worth it. It's a, such a cool pedal. And this is what those clipping modes sound like. So I'm gonna leave the mids out for this. Let's uh, keep both toggles off. Fuzz is at full, cause we're not fucking around. <laughs> Pretty open and glorious. Chunky, so chunky. So let's put clipping one in. Let's see what it does. I don't think this reduces the volume too much. So for me right here, I can hear the bass fattening up a bit. Whether it's so obvious down the mic, I'm not so sure. Ah, yeah, so it also softens off the high end. We're getting a less attack in here. So obviously being a diode coming in, it's squashing up against it. And, you know, we're essentially squandering the tone in a way, um, just like how Glenn Fricker describes the effect of distortion on pickups. You start to lose the tonal characteristics the more 
distortion you have. So if, if you introduce another diode, you get more distortion. And so you start taking off transients and all sorts of stuff. That's probably gonna be my bass tone. I haven't recorded the intro song yet. That's the magic of YouTube. And I'm now deciding that that's probably gonna be the bass tone. Let's round it off and make it fat. So I'm gonna turn that one off for now to bring the second one in. Now the interesting thing is the noise didn't drop. We've got a drop in volume, I promise. But the noise didn't drop. So that sort of tells you where your sort of baseline signal really is. The noise is sitting here. Normally your signal's going right up like that. And now the diode's clipping it. So that's compression, right? A difference between the noise floor and the peak we're gonna get from the signal. <laughs> but we do get a lot more saturation and the high end comes in a lot nicer on this one. This also sounds a little more mid scooped by way of the high end coming up. So these clipping diodes characteristics are that it shears off low end. Definitely get squishy, like they describe on the website. So let's put them both in. It's gone super smooth now. How about that for some leads? I mean, like a smooth thing, maybe it's for the boomers. Actually like pentatonics over and over again. So uh, let's do a bit of a rapid fire and the clipping, second clipping option, because it drops in volume, I will equalize that so you can actually hear the difference in post. We're gonna go rapid fire in three, two, one. <laughs> Now, my favorite setting is to have clip two in with clip one off. Oh, that's wrong. No, gotta have clip two off. All the clips off, right, really accentuates what clip one off does in the way of a kind of uh, tone bendery thing. Now, the super tone bender wasn't particularly a tone bender, but you hear this sort of hard attack with a tone bender, evident in like Led Zeppelin stuff that you can hear kind of happening here. And it almost gates, it's almost like overloaded to the point where it dips after the note before the sound comes back up. See if you can hear it. Here getting really, uh, is staccato the classic word? Staccato, now if I put clip one in, you won't hear that stabbiness. It does the classic muff thing and just kind of woofs behind everything. Interesting, it does that on clip two as well. So already, even not just changing that clipping stage, but changing another clipping stage, you take the character away from the clipping stage before it. So with the most scooped sound, I think let's put the mid-range knob in. I think bringing the tone down, if it's anything like the Pharaoh, when the tone's down, it's really kind of out of the circuit. It gets a lot louder and it's still usable completely down, particularly when you've got the mid-range in. Okay, there we lose it. It's, there we lose it with the mids in. So to me, this is a, a, a much more useful knob than what the Pharaoh has, which is a highs knob, which is purely there to bring back some highs when you put the tone knob right down. Instead, this mids knob still works the whole breadth of the tone knob. Um, they don't kind of negate each other the way that the Pharaoh does. To me, this still isn't a replacement for the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh, does exactly what I need it to do 
and particularly as it comes in a smaller version, I'm pointing to my board down here, you can't see it, never mind. Comes in the smaller version, the Sonar Faro, that's what goes on my board, and it just does what it needs to do. However, in the studio, when we're recording, such as we have been recently, so check out Goza, my band, in the links below for a new EP coming soon, covered in fucking fuzzy goodness. I'll reach for something like the Priestess to see which of those clipping characteristics is gonna come through best on the recording. So I'll preview a little riff for you now that really suits one of these modes. <laughs> So the nature of that benefits from having a slightly gated sound. We don't really want to use gates so much in Doom because we want all this noise to be blooming everywhere. But if we can tighten up a riff like that, fuck yeah. So that's it guys. If you've been subscribing recently, thank you very much. I'm amazed that I get subscribers when I'm not even posting videos. So hopefully this is worth it to all you newbies and my old schoolers that joined me way back in the OK Duma days. Uh, if you want to hear more of this pedal, particularly compared to other muffs, there is a big muff deep dive in two parts for the real fucking nerds. So you can get over there and hear this next to some of the modern classics like the Keeley Moon. And with that, I'll see you next time. Fuck you, Doomers.